Welcome to the Curiox Biosystems webinar. We have two speakers, Ann Wang from Curiox Biosystems and Dr. Malcolm Crook from Peak Analysis and Automation. The webinar will last approximately 30 minutes. Please type your questions in the question box and we will address them at the end. Now, Ann Wang. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sheila, for that introduction. As you mentioned, I'm an automation scientist here at Curox Biosystems, formerly an application scientist. And we also have with us Malcolm, who is from uh, Peak Analysis and Automation. In this webinar, um, I'd like to introduce to you the laminar wash technology for those who are not familiar with it yet. We'll present some laminar wash automation solutions. And then our, my colleague Malcolm here will discuss integrating some PAA automation products with the laminar wash technology. We'll look at some data that was obtained with the laminar wash. And finally, we'll do a summary and some questions. Here is just a very quick, very high level workflow that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So you get a sample of some cells, you prep them in some way for downstream analysis. And this gives us all the therapies that we know today. Um, in the last year, we've seen how this has led to vaccine development at record speeds. We've seen um, cancer treatments be discovered every year. Um, and even organ transplants have been made possible with this workflow. However, there is a piece to this puzzle that comes from a different century. With all the advanced analytical tools like flow, mass cytometry, single cell sequencing that you're all familiar with, I'm not sure that a lot of you know that the centrifuge was invented actually a couple hundred years ago. This, it's very difficult to automate, as we'll talk about today. It causes a lot of inter and intra-user variability, which can really affect consistency and reproducibility. And it's also really harsh on your cells, and we'll look at some data in this webinar for that. And we think here at Curiox that the centrifuge is a roadblock to automated cell suspension prep, and we think it's time for sample prep to enter the 21st century. So. What we have as a solution to that is called laminar wash. It offers a novel method of sample prep to overcome these challenges that we just talked about. So instead of a complicated centrifuge-based automation, laminar wash is much more straightforward to automate, as we will demonstrate in a little bit. Instead of having your scientist stand at a, at a bench, pipetting for hours and using boxes after boxes of pipette tips and just really bringing on carpal tunnel syndrome very quickly, Laminar wash requires much less hands-on time, which can potentially address some throughput and reproducibility issues that are inherent to centrifuge-based systems. It's also just much better for your scientists to not have to pipette for hours on end every day. And instead of subjecting your precious cells to hundreds of G-forces in the centrifuge, laminar wash is much gentler and it washes cells without disturbing its physiology. And this helps to preserve cells in their native state as close as possible. And that is really what we find will give you the best results for phenotyping and genotyping downstream, whether it's cytometry or single cell sequencing or whatever else that we can come up with. So just a little introduction as to how laminar wash technology works. So first, we have the plate. It is made up of 96 hydrophilic wells that are surrounded by a hydrophobic surface, shown here in this video in pink. This is what allows these droplets to form even without physical walls. The max volume that goes into a well is about 80 microliters, but we have attachments that can increase that capacity for incubation. So here is where you would pipette your cells um, with some antibodies. You can use a single channel pipette or a multi-channel pipette. And then the cells can incubate with the antibodies. So as the cells are incubating with the antibodies, they're also just kind of settling down by gravity because that's what gravity does. And so as the cells are incubating with the antibodies, they're settling to the bottom, they're not subject to huge forces. And as they incubate all the cell debris, the unbound antibodies that are still in solution remain in solution because they don't settle as fast. And so once your cells have settled, now you can put it into the washer and you can see a touch screen here. And on that touch screen, you can actually customize your flow rate, the number of washers and some of the other parameters that you would like to control. And once that's done, the washer lowers the fluidity head onto the plate, and every well, every well of the 96 wells gets its own dedicated pair of nozzles, one to dispense and one to aspirate. So the dispensing nozzle here on the left is dispensing fresh buffer into the well, and then the aspirating nozzle will then aspirate waste buffer. So through a process of serial dilution, you can do this process as many times or as few times as you would like. 
through this process of serial dilution, it removes all the unbound antibodies, it removes cell debris, and all the junk that you don't want that's in suspension, but it leaves the cells sitting at the bottom intact and undisturbed. They're not crushed by centrifugal forces, which is great for the cells. And once that's done, the washer gives you back your plate and you can move on to the next step or to acquisition. So I'd like to illustrate to you a couple examples of how the centrifuge really impacts your cells. So on the left here, we see two pictures. These are both taken um, by microscopy. And the picture on the left here shows some cells that were processed by centrifugation. This is just a very standard sort of lab method. You can see the cells are crushed. They're much smaller. There are not that many cells left on the plate, and the fluorescence signal is pretty weak. And on the right, you see cells processed by lamina wash. So first off, you can see there's much more cells left, many more cells left on the plate. Um, the cells look much happier. The morphology is much more intact. They look, ha they look happier and healthier. And you can see that the fluorescence signal is also stronger. And on the right here, we see a graph that I'm sure many of you have had this issue with which is that the lower your starting number of cells, the worse the cell retention gets, right? At a million cells, you can, you can get pretty good cell retention after a centrifuge wash. But if you have really rare cell types or rare cell samples and you get down to like 40,000, 20,000 as a starting number, cell retention really, really drops off because the pellet is so small, it's really hard to see, it's hard to control for um, consistency across replicates even. With laminar wash, we do see consistently high cell retention and there's no preferential loss of cell types. And I have to mention, this is not prescriptive, right? I'm not promising 80% cell retention across anything that you wanna use the lamina wash for, but we do see that typically the lamina wash system can match or improve cell retention, especially if the starting cell number is really low. So this is an automation webinar, so we'll talk about automation. Um, on the left here, you'll see the Auto 1000. This is a turnkey solution. There's no scripting necessary. We've already done this with our partner over at Hamilton. This is really designed for scientists to just input your protocol and press the start button and then it will run. There's more I'll give you more details in the next slide. Um, the middle product here, this is the HD2000, the high throughput 2000 washer. It washes 96 wells at the same time. This is really our flagship laminar wash instrument. And this is what we put into the heart of the Auto 1000, shown on the left. Or you can also integrate the HT2000 washer with any existing automation system, or you can design a bespoke automation system for your lab. Now, importantly, and this is the time I really want to mention that none of the laminar wash products will generate any aerosols that you can get when you flick plates into the sink. And this system can also fit very easily into a biosafety hood. So you can put the entire protocol in a biosafety cabinet for BSL2 plus work, which makes it very ideal for infectious disease work or when you're working with human samples. And we found this to be very helpful in the past year during the pandemic, obviously, as we have scientists that are still working on, on all kinds of therapies. Um, and we want to make sure that we protect our scientists from anything that could be in human samples that we just don't know about yet. Um, on the right here, we are looking at the lamina wash plates. So these are specialized plates designed for lamina wash. I have to mention you cannot use any 96 volt plate. It has to be these specialized plates. They're compatible with multi-channel pipettes, like I've talked about. They're also compatible with most flow cytometers and also with um, microscopes up to about 20x. So this is the Auto 1000 that I mentioned in the previous slide, just a bit more information off this. This is um, an HD 2000 washer enclosed in a Hamilton Nimbus platform. This entire setup fits on, on a lab bench and it, the deck has everything you'll need so you can set it up and then just walk away. It comes with a shaker or a vortexer. It also comes with temperature control peltiers for incubation. So I'd just like to show you a video really quickly. This video is set at 40x speed, so it moves very quickly, but I think it gives a really good overview of a very typical flow cytometry protocol that you might see. So right now it's adding samples into the plate and then a vortex to distribute cells across the plate. You can also, now it's doing live dead, so you can do a live dead stain, primary, secondary antibodies, you can fix perm on the plate, you can do intracellular staining, you can transfer for acquisition. This, this deck will do everything that you need it to do. And then you'll also see, so now you can see that the plates can be vortex to mix. It's now incubated on a Peltier, so that goes from four to 37 degrees. And it's incubated with an opaque lid, so it's not to photobleach your antibodies. And then it goes into the lamina wash washer to wash. 
So one thing to mention, because the video is sped up so much, you can really see that how fast the washes are compared to the rest of the workflow. So this is why the lambda wash technology we think is so much easier to automate is because the movements are very simple and the washes are really quick. And so it makes, it really simplifies the deck, it simplifies troubleshooting, um, and it's a lot easier to learn than to have um, a, a centrifuge-based system. So let's talk a little bit more. So you can have the Auto 1000 turnkey solution, or you can integrate an HD 2000 into your lab's existing workflow if you'd like. So it can be integrated into any existing or designed automation system that your lab prefers. All you need from us is an automation license key, and a buffer exchanger that allows connection up to six different buffers for the workflow. This would be the time for me to introduce to you Malcolm, who is the technical director over at PAA, and he will describe how to integrate the HD2000 washer with the SLAP platform um, that PAA produces. So hand it over to Malcolm. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, everybody, depending where you are in the world. So uh, PAA is an automation company and uh, we produce a range of uh, products uh, from the plate handler we're going to talk about today, our control software and uh, enclosures. And in the USA, we have a full robot manufacturing plant and uh, plate storage option uh, facility. So between those two, we can supply a, a, a device agnostic automation solution. And these can come in a number of different sizes. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the small uh, SLAP, which is a stacker. And we currently have uh, 34 instruments that can be connected to this device. Or we can use our KX2 collaborative robot. And uh, that allows us access to 300 plus instruments. Whereas the SLAB only tends to serve one or two instruments, the KX2 can serve up, up to 10, depending on how many you can get around the outside of it. And of course, the uh, Curiox device can be in either the small or the uh, larger work cell. We then take our work cells up uh, to the medium sized work cells and the very much larger work cells. So we can offer a one-stop shop for your automation uh, uh, requ requirements. And we do have the uh, robot on a track, which gives us another uh, 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 bow. So we're looking more detail about the automated uh, stacker. This is an entry level automation device designed to be easy to install and easy to use. And it allows us to automate a single instrument with stacks or incubation. And if we look at this being integrated with the HT2000 system, you can see that uh, with the integration completed, you have everything you need. We have the uh, little stacker, we have the driver to drive it, we have the Harmony user interface. Also, uh, this is a, a low to medium size throughput, so you can't expect to put thousands of plates through here, but sometimes you just don't need to. And then we have a capacity on this system of around about uh, 80 lidded or 100 unlidded standard microplates. If we look at the anatomy of the system, we have a 360 degree rotation. So whenever the SLAB needs to get from one point to another, it will always go the quickest way. We have the Curiox HT2000 instrument within the work area. We have a, a standard bracket, uh, and each of the instruments has a bracket to ensure that we keep uh, the distance between the uh, device and the stacker. We have a regrip nest. When you need accurate placement, often it's best to go via this centralizing uh, nest. The on off switch for safety. We have a delidding station, so when we need to delid, we are able to do that on or off the instrument, depending on the instrument itself. And then we have our stacks, each capable of taking 20 lidded or 25 unlidded microplates. And of course, you always have an input and an output stack. So if you have uh, one stack, you need two. And if you have three stacks, you need four, because you always need an output stack. In addition, we can replace these stacks with an incubator, and this can be a small in-HECO full-position incubator. The Thermo or Lyconic uh, offer a range offer you from 42 plates up to several hundred. And finally, should you need to shake, you can have add a shaker 
into that nest position and still use it as the delinting station as well. So what are the advantages? Why, why are we going to do this? In terms of cost, it does depend on the application, but this is the most affordable automation option that's available on the market. So it gives you a very good throughput to cost ratio. And because it includes absolutely everything you need, uh, which isn't shown on the picture before, but you can even uh, connect a barcode reader to one of the uh, nests. Small footprint, it's, it takes up a very limited amount of space and you don't need any special bench. This is going to fit on your standard laboratory bench. It has easy access. The device has easy access. Uh, it's more like a plate reader than the centrifuge. You don't need specialist grippers. There isn't any vibration. It's rapid to set up and easy to use. In terms of the lab labware, we can use any standard uh, microplate or lid. And therefore, if you're using the HG2000, clearly that plate has to be approved by Curiox as well. Uh, we have an advantage over centrifuge for speed. We don't have to wait for the arm to stop rotating. We don't have to wait then for the arm to index to the access position. And we don't have to wait for the armored door to open. We just have the little tray that comes out with your plate. So usually the centrifuge can be the rate limiting step, in which case you have to have two centrifuges. And of course, you have to balance it. Either you use a, the correct balancing plate or you have to have a complex schedule to load both sides of your, of your centrifuge. In terms of reliability, of course, there's very few moving parts inside the uh, HT2000, whereas a centrifuge has extreme moving parts that go round at several thousand RPM. We only have a small, small access port. Sometimes some of the devices go below deck. Bucket loading is always difficult. Alignment is important, and it does rely on internal components inside the centrifuge for registration of the plate so the robot gripper can att attach to it. So because it's more complex, you get more servicing, and sometimes you need additional uh, services to make it work. So another advantage is uh, uh, efficiency, because the removal of the liquid off the pellet is easy, we don't need that standard handling, uh, liquid handling step. I have a quick uh, couple of videos. Um, I haven't gone to 40 times speed, uh, but I have edited out the dull bits. So you can see we have uh, the ability to detect the plate and take plate and lid. This then will be removed to the delidding station. And as I said, we can use a range of different types of plates as long as they are compatible with the Curiox device. And then once we've actually delidded the plate, we can then move the plate into the instrument. Notice how everything is very precise and there's no shaking of your, of your cells on the plate. The speed of the device is optimized for cells. We then locate that plate onto the device. And then if we go in close up in the bottom middle, you can see that the plate is retracted there is the washing step, which I've edited out, and then the whole process is reversed as we take that plate off the device and we return it back to the stacks via the delivering station. So how do we make this nice and easy to use? Uh, as with the other Curiox device, we have a very simple user interface. No complex flow charting or uh, other type of interface. It's a very simple uh, uh, user interface that has two buttons. And wherever possible, we help fill you in and lead you through the standard operating procedure as well. Once you've pressed start, you can ex uh, accept a uh, experiment name and we can get that information from the instrument. How many plates do you want to run? Uh, we can do an automatic scan or we can indicate that we want to run five or 10 or 20 plates. And then we can tell the system if the plates are lidded, because clearly if they are not, you don't need to delid them. Finally, we can add an email address if you like. This allows us to tell you when the batch of samples has been run. 
And finally, you get a summary of the run for you to actually make a decision whether that's what you intended to do. And then at runtime, you can see the device. And along the bottom, you can see the uh, number of plates that have been processed. Uh, looking at a video of this happening, uh, this is my wife at SLIS. She gets a free trip every year when it runs. And you can see even a nurse can handle an automation system. The way the system will go. So, in summary, uh, PAA technologies offer you a range of automation solutions for one or more instruments. We specialize in stacker solutions and uh, robots. As I told you at the beginning, we manufacture all our own robotic solutions. We have a simple user interface and we can be up and running in a day. And just, don't, just so you don't feel lonely wherever you are in the world, we have representation in the USA in Europe and in Asia and South Africa. So I'd like to thank the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon and hand you back to Curios. Thank you so much, Malcolm and Anne. So we do have some questions that have come in. The first one, how carefully do I need to move the plate to the device after incubation? Um, so uh, the robot does everything for you. Um, so the uh, sensitivity of the speed, very sensitive sails can be moved slower than those that are a little bit more rugged. So uh, from the user point of view, it's all done for you. Wonderful. Next question. What's the loading capacity of number of cells for each well, especially for tumor dissociated cells? So we can load as low a number really into it as, as we want. I think for tumor cells, especially because there are sometimes quite a lot of collagen and, and sticky stuff in it. Um, we typically recommend about one to two million to start with, but that differs from tumor to tumor, differs from lab to lab. But I would say it's typically we match whatever the standard operating protocol is for the existing um, assay. Thank you. Next question. Does the S-Lab fit a standard BSL-2 hood? Uh, yes, I believe it does. Next, how do you ensure no debris remains with the settled cells at the bottom of the well? That is a good question. So one is, the so two parts of this answer. One, debris doesn't really settle very fast because it's so buoyant. It tends to be very light. And so it gets washed away um, when, even with laminar flow, it does get washed away in solution. And two, we do have different flow rates that can be adjusted on the washer. And so sometimes we have seen for example, in single cell sequencing, that the users might want to go up to a slightly higher flow rate to be a little bit more efficient in removing debris and unbound antibodies. And this also speeds up the time as well. Next question. What do we need to purchase from Curiox to make this work with a PAA or other automation system? That's a great question. So we have the washer, the buffer exchanger as well. And um, the also, so to automate, Oh, sorry, to integrate with another system, we need an automation license key. So those are really, that's really it besides, you know, things like service contract and, and consumables, but really it's just the automation license key, the washer and the buffer exchanger. Thank you. Next question. Can you comment on risk of contamination between wells? That is a very good question. We do get that question quite a lot. The risk of contamination is very, very low. So there are maintenance procedures that we require for setup and shutdown of the system. And while it's washing, because every well gets its own dedicated set of nozzles, if the washer is maintained well, it's calibrated well every day, we do not see cross-contamination issues. Does the washer work well with E. coli cells? That is an interesting question. I do believe we have had some historical experience with bacterial cells. I would suggest um, for the asker of, of that question to reach out to our application team um, or to, to Kirox and we will get one of our application scientists to speak with you because I think it is application dependent. Is the plate compatible with the BD Fortessa flow cytometer? Yes, it is. The plates are compatible with most if not all of the BD flow cytometers that we've used. There are a couple of accessories that will help with direct acquisition off of the laminar wash plates or alternatively the user can also transfer into a, a another type of 96 well plate if they so choose. So they have they have both options. Uh, following up on loading capacity, what's the maximum number of cells for each well? 
that depends on the type of cell. So sometimes the smaller cells like PBMCs or splenocytes can get up to quite a few million. Um, typically, I think we recommend up to 5 million, but that could be more depending on the type of cell. And usually we find that laminar wash really works very well in lower cell numbers because like I mentioned before, it's really in the lower cell numbers that users of the centrifuge struggle with. Can the Curiac system work with any robot? I believe so. <laughs> if they have our um, automation license key, the company can can write their own driver and get it get the system to communicate. So yeah, I would say um, to reach out to the Curiox team, and we can have discussions. It's a little hard to it's it's a little hard to answer this in, in such a general fashion. Right, could be so many different ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. How long does the HT two thousand take to wash a single plate? That is a good question. So I think actually this would be a good time for me. There's this is a good opportunity for me to show you some data. So so this is actually a case study that we did with a large biopharmaceutical company here in the USA. That's all I'm allowed to say about their about their identity. But this is actually a case study that we did um, to look at time savings. So there's a couple of things I'd like to mention on this. So one in general is first you will see that the number of steps has been significantly reduced with laminar wash compared to centrifuge. And this is because on the right here, if you can see my cursor, with a normal centrifuge protocol, what you're looking at is you know pipetting and then you spin and flick and then repeat. That's kind of how an assay works. With the laminar wash system, the HT washer takes care of the quote unquote spin and flick part of it. So really all you do is pipette, put it in the washer, take it out, pipette, put it back in the washer. So because of that, the number of steps has been halved. Um, we've also reduced the number of wash steps because sometimes a protocol will ask for like a two time centrifuge spin or three times centrifuge spin. On the HT washer, you can just type on the, on the touch screen how many washes you want it to do and it will automatically do that. So the, the actual wash number, the, sorry, the no, amount of time it takes to wash a plate will depend on the flow rate and the number of washes that you do. But typically, we can. It takes about, I would say, two and a half minutes upwards to however many washes that they do. Typically, two and a half minutes um, to wash a plate, or three and a half minutes in this case is about pretty standard. And yeah, so overall, you can see here with this particular case study that this group did, because they are a medium throughput lab and they are looking to automate it. The number, the amount of time it would take for 10 plates to be processed is two, about 260 minutes on the centrifuge and almost half of that with the laminate wash system. And this doesn't take into account, you know, just all the pipette tips that you're saving, all of the time that it takes to go to the centrifuge, to negotiate time with the centrifuge with your colleague, to change temperature. Someone changed the temperature, you have to wait for it to cool back down again or heat back up change the setting. So it doesn't take into account those things that can happen in a very busy lab. So the actual time savings can be quite significant, we find. Thank you. This is very helpful. Great. Uh, next question. What holds the cells on the laminar wash plate? That would just be magical gravity. So I know it's kind of hard to believe because a lot of scientists are so used to just relying on centripetal force to pellet their cells at the bottom. But cells actually do a pretty good job of settling on the bottom of a flat plate if they're not disturbed. So typically we let the cell settle and then we put it in the washer and because the wash is gentle enough, it doesn't actually lift the cells off. It does take, to lift the cells off as you would if you want to maybe incubate it for a secondary step or if you would like to transfer it to another plate for, for downstream analysis. This is where the vortexer comes in. You'll, if you remember, we have a vortexer built in into the auto and also the, the, um, the PA system can have a vortexer built in. So because the plates, the wells are hydrophilic, anything, it will just interact well with any with anything that's in solution, basically. It will be kept in by the hydrophobic surfaces that are in between the wells. Okay, great. We have a couple more questions. What's the lowest number of cells I can use with Curiox? That is a great question. I love it when people are thinking low cell numbers. So I would like to show you another case study. I think this will illustrate what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So this is another case study that was done at the therapeutics company here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, close to where we are based. And it's, it's a 
like most therapeutics companies, there are multiple groups, right? So there's R&D, screening, process development, sort of manufacturing, QC, all of that. And they all will use cell-based assays to some degree. They might use different cell numbers. They might be looking for different things. But in this particular case, I think this case study really showcases the benefits at very low cell numbers or for very rare cell types. So this particular example, we're looking at uh, trying to improve retention, viability, and staining efficiency for some pretty rare cell types. We looked at a few different tumor models. So here we're, we're working with 100,000 cells per well, which isn't super low, but we sometimes work with even lower cell numbers than that or higher. A few hundred thousand is pretty middle of the pack in terms of cell number. We've also done some staining with a TNK panel, a dendritic cell panel, and also myeloid cell panels. And we've compared the centrifuge SOP they've been doing for years next to a laminar wash protocol um, side by side. So we have a good comparison. And this was just analyzed the flow. So on the first, this is, uh, I'm only showing two slides out of a much larger data set. But essentially here, what you can see is, first off, that if you look at the left column, so the top is laminar wash and bottom is cells processed by centrifuge. So first you can see that the live CD45 population is much higher, both in terms of actual number from, from the actual flow data, and also here in terms of percentage, right? So cell retention is definitely significantly improved. And in this particular case as well, much better population separation between positive and negative. Um, populations, which makes it much easier to gate. You can have much more confidence in your gating strategy. In the middle here is the cell, other cells I'm talking about. So these are some natural killer cells that are pretty rare. And typically they were seeing less than 1% of this particular T cell and some NK cells. With the laminar wash, because of how gentle it was, we were able to retain much, much more um, a significantly higher percentage and actual number of cells as well. You can see here we're closer to 10% rather than less than 1% of NK cells. And here as well, CD8, CD4, this is a very common, um, these are some very common cells that people look for. And you can see as well in the gates, we are looking at much higher cell numbers. So here's another example. This is a different tumor model, different day, and a different panel as well. This is a DC panel looking for dendritic cells. So again, in the live CD45 gate, you're seeing much higher cell number and percentage. And in this case as well, much better population separation. And then if we look at CD, this is CD26 and CD172, just two types of dendritic cells. You can see as well within the gate that there are many, many more cells. And when you get down to very cell, very rare cell types like this with very low cell numbers, it becomes increasingly difficult to do sort of statistical analyses downstream, right? You're looking at very high coefficients of variance. It's, you see large variability from replicate to replicate even from day to day. And so we find that because lemon wash is much better at retaining where cell types, retaining cells when the cell numbers are very low, this really helps to give you greater confidence in your downstream statistical analyses as well. So that is also a, an added benefit of, of the lemon wash system. Thank you. Thank you for showing the data. Yeah, no worries. Question, can you use the curats to change media or to add media that include drugs or similar applications? So in short, yes. The, we do have some customers who use the Lemon and Wash system to sort of do media replacement or, or media exchange over the cells. There is a priming volume associated with the washer that I do have to mention. So with the automated system, typically we're looking at about 100 to 150 mils in terms of priming volume. So the higher throughput it is, the, the less that matters, right? It works out to be less per, per well or per plate, but that can be a factor. And I just want the, the user or the asker of that question to be aware that yes, it is possible, but there is a priming volume that you need to be aware of. Do Curiox or PAA provide in-house demos and evaluations? Um, I can speak from the, the Curiox side. We do have a team of field application scientists also all over the world. So we do provide um, demos. And so what I would suggest is to reach out to um, the webinar organizers or reach out to us via our website, and we will put you in touch with the closest team that is to your location. I'll let Malcolm speak for PAA. Uh, from PAA's point of view, uh, we used to until we weren't allowed to travel anymore. Uh, so now we rely on our our partners like Curiox and videos. Uh, it does take uh, a day or so to set these things up, and it is a low cost cost uh, device. So uh, 
what we would probably do is uh, ask for the uh, demonstration that you wanted to see and we would set it up in an appropriate way. Next question, how do you ensure maximum recovery of cells from wells? Hmm, how do you ensure maximum recovery? So there are, I'm gonna assume this is just sort of how do we optimize cell retention on the plate. So um, there are multiple factors that go into cell retention, I, I do have to say, and that is also slightly application dependent. So in terms of the general, general sort of principles that we want to work with is that you want to make sure the cells are incubated or the plate is incubated on a stable surface. Because as you can imagine, we're only relying on gravity. And so if you incubate it, for example, on a vortex, or that's not really going to settle very well. We want to control things like um, volume and sort of stability and, and things like that. There are a host of other factors that are very application dependent, so I'm not going to go into much detail here. Again, this is something that your local application scientists can really work with you to optimize. To, to optimize. Great. What is the rough cost of a Curiox wash plate? It's about, I believe, about $25 a plate. Great. Thank you. And last question here. How long did it take to integrate the Curiox with the PAA system? Uh, well, as you saw in the video, we've done it before. Uh, so it's a question of getting the procedure that you want to run on the Curiox. Uh, and as I said, usually we will get one of these installations done and tested within a day. Great, thank you. We actually have one more question that came in. Is it possible to scale the laminar washing process up significantly to efficiently harvest cells from a two liter batch size, which might ordinarily be dealt with with a continuous centrifuge, for instance? That is a very specific question. Um, and I, to be honest, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I think it would be helpful to kind of have a discussion as to some of the details of that process. Um, because essentially the laminar wash right now only works with 96 well plate and it's really designed to wash. And so there are some, there, there might be some further discussion that needs to be had before I can fully answer that question because I wanna make sure I'm not, misunderstanding the question and being misleading in my answer. So again, not to throw this on to the next person, but I would recommend reaching out to your local application scientist team. Right, and we can do that too and get back directly to you. Okay, well, thank you so much everyone for attending. The recording will be available on our website at curiox.com. Thank you and goodbye.